the operation which cut off Iraq from the world's open seas. The Arvand River is a complex river with high tides and strange fluctuations in water flow. Due to the sophisticated physical conditions, the military advisors were assured enough that there wouldn't be any crossing through the Arvand River. Even the well-equipped Iraqi army had chosen the northern Shalamche Peninsula to attack the Khorram Shar at the very beginning of the war, due to the existing crossing problem through Arvand. While the Iranians had driven the Iraqis off of their soil, in 1982, Iranian efforts to invade Iraq and cause the downfall of the regime of Saddam Hussein had been fruitless. Iran had suffered due to a lack of spare parts and its inability to replace lost equipment. In the face of increasing Iraqi armament and manpower, as well as increasing problems on their own side, Iran could no longer rely on outnumbering Iraqi troops. While the infantry and human wave assaults would remain key to their attacks throughout the war, Iran began to rely more heavily on infiltration and surprise attacks as a part of limited light infantry warfare. A game-changing operation from Iran's side could terminate the war and push Saddam's regime to accept the Iranian conditions. The al fa Peninsula is a peninsula in the Persian Gulf, located in the extreme southeast of Iraq. The Marshi Peninsula is 20 kilometers southeast of Iraq's third largest city, Basra, and is part of a delta for the Arvand or Shakt al Arab River, formed by the confluence of the major Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The Alfa was indeed the only accessing point of the Iraq for the Persian Gulf. Preparing for a game changing operation. After months of studies on the Arvand River flow behavior, Iran began to plan for a major offensive. While deceptively making it seem like the attack was to be against the southern Iraqi city of al-Basra, the attack was really aimed at the southern Alfa Peninsula, touching the Persian Gulf and the only area of Iraq that touched the open sea. The Iranians hoped to cut off Iraq from the Persian Gulf, making the country landlocked and threaten Basra from the south. More importantly, Iran hoped to deliver a series of blows against Iraq that would lead to its downfall via attrition warfare. The operation was to be called Operation Valfaj 8. Crossing the Arvan Iranian combat engineers designed a bridge consisting of 5,000 pipes with 12 meters length each. These pipes were connected in a honeycomb structure style, allowing the undercrossing of the Arvand River. After the pipes are installed and fixed, the top was covered by asphalt layer. The war begins. On February 9, 1986, the Iranians launched Operation Malfaj 8, in which 100,000 troops, comprising five army divisions and 50,000 men from the Pastoran and the Basij, advanced in a two pronged offensive into southern Iran. Unlike the earlier offensives, Malfaj 8 was planned entirely by professional army officers. The Iranians launched a feint attack against Basra around Al Kurna from 9th to 14th of February, attempting to split Iraq's 3rd and 7th Corps. This was stopped by the Iraqis. Meanwhile, the main Iranian blow fell on the strategically important al fa Peninsula, which fell after only 24 hours of fighting. The first Iranian attack used frogmen against Umm al Rasas Island in the Shat al Arab crossing from Khorram Shah as a step in stone to reach the Al Fa Peninsula. They captured the island, but an Iraqi counterattack recaptured it three days later. Iran's second simultaneous attack was aimed at the foot of the peninsula, using a division sized strike force of the Revolutionary Guard's amphibious forces on small boats and large LSD boats. They landed at six points on the peninsula after an intense artillery and air bombardment. The Iranians were well supported by artillery and air power during this attack. Iranian forces drove north along the peninsula, almost unstopped, capturing it after only 24 hours of fighting. The resistance, consisting of several thousand poorly trained soldiers of the Iraqi Popular Army, fled or were defeated, taking 4,000 casualties and 1,500 becoming prisoners of war. The Iranian strike force overran the tip of the peninsula in 24 hours. 
And while most of the frontline Iraqis fled, the town of Alfa held out until 14th of February. The Iraqis had not expected an Iranian attack at this area, assuming that the Iranians were incapable of launching a major amphibious operation. Due to being taken by surprise and poor weather, the Iraqis were unable to launch a major counterattack, but began to fight back as early as February 12th. Iran quickly in the meantime set up pontoon bridges across the Shakht al-Arab and rapidly moved 20,000 troops from the besieged Hastaran and regular army onto the peninsula. To avoid detection by American satellites and Iraqi warplanes, the components of the bridges were welded together underwater during the night. Oxygen tanks were then strapped to the sides of the bridges, causing it to rise to the surface. Afterwards, they dug in and set up defenses. Iraqi Counter-Offensive On February 12, 1986, the Iraqis began a counter-offensive to retake the Fa, which failed after a week of intense fighting. Saddam sent one of his best commanders, General Maher Abdul Rashid, and the Republican Guard to begin a new offensive to recapture the Fa on 24th of February 1986. A new round of intensive fighting took place, centered on a three-pronged counterattack. The Iraqi offensives were supported by the helicopter gunships, hundreds of tanks, and a huge bombing offensive by the Iraqi Air Force. Despite having an advantage in firepower and the extensive use of chemical warfare, the Iraqi attempt to retake the Fa again ended in failure, costing them many tanks and aircrafts. Their 15th mechanized division was almost completely wiped out. The capture of Al Fa and the failure of the Iraqis' counteroffensives were blows to the Ba'ath regime's prestige and led the Gulf countries to fear that Iran might win the war. Kuwait, in particular, felt menaced with Iranian troops only 16 kilometers away and increased its support of Iraq accordingly. Iraq launched another counterattack on March 10th, which was unsuccessful. The occupation of Alfa placed the city of Basra at risk of being attacked. Rumors of a final Iranian offensive against Basra proliferated. To help defend itself, Iraq had built impressive fortifications and Iraq devoted particular attention to the southern city of Basra. It built concrete-roofed bunkers, tank and artillery firing positions, minefields in stretches of barbed wire, all shielded by an artificially flooded lake 30 kilometers long and 1,800 meters wide. The Iranians put their foothold in the Alfa Peninsula to good use. They used the peninsula as a launch pad for silkworm missiles, which were deployed against shipping and oil terminals in the Persian Gulf, and also against Kuwait, which supported Iraq throughout the war. It gave them a chokehold on any goods and supplies coming up the Shakht al-Arab and Khawar Abdullah waterway for Iraq. The intense fighting cost Iraq an estimated 10,000 to 17,000 casualties as well as 70 to 75 aircrafts, while Iran lost about 20,000 during the two weeks, partly due to the use of chemical weapons.